Good evening. I'm Reverend Ann Cubbage, the senior pastor at Broadmoor Community Church, a church that believes so strongly no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And I would like to say welcome to this Lessons and Carol service on this most holiest of nights. Good evening. I am Reverend Lynn Hurst, Minister of Music. Thank you for joining us this evening. Tonight will be our 17th consecutive Lessons and Carol service. Of course, this year it feels a little different since we aren't live, but we hope this service will help you experience again the story of Christmas. It is our prayer that all who hear this will be blessed. Let us begin our worship together on this holy Christmas Eve. Over the last four Sundays of Advent, we have lit hope, peace, joy, and love. And so they are lit tonight, and we will light tonight, the night that Jesus was born, the Christ came. May we remember that in the weary world, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it.
beloved in Christ, on this night, let it be our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of creation until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this sanctuary glad with our carols of praise. This is our first lesson, Isaiah 40, 3 through 5. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it.
the third lesson, Luke 1, 26 through 35 and 38. The angel Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she will give birth to God's promised son whose kingdom shall never end. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, your servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
The fourth lesson from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Against a backdrop of emperors and taxes, Jesus is born. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The fifth lesson, Luke 2, 8 through 16. The shepherds go to see the savior of the world lying in a manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. Thank you. 
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. The wise men follow a star to find the child Jesus, the king of the Jews. In the time of Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall become a ruler who is to be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem. Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. timeless Charlie Brown's Christmas. Charlie Brown tells Linus, I think there must be something wrong with me. I might be getting presents and sending Christmas cards and decorating trees and all that, but I'm still not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. Don't many of us feel this way, especially here at the end of what can only be described as, well, a horrendous year. 
just as did Charlie Brown, we have lost something. And that something I think is wonder. When we were kids, there were so many more than seven wonders of the world. There were seven million. But now, we, like Charlie Brown, want to feel the way we're supposed to feel. Albert Einstein once said, he who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. It's time for us to pause in wonder. Have you ever noticed that in every manger scene, everyone, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the magi, every adult is looking in the same direction. They're all looking towards the manger, at the baby in the manger. They pose in wonder. Perhaps we too need to look towards the baby in the manger once again. When Charlie Brown moans, isn't there anyone who understands what Christmas is all about? Linus repeats the words of the angel to the shepherds. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He then walks back to Charlie Brown and says, that's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about hearing the amazing story of God's love from surprising places. It's about a flash mob singing in the middle of a busy shopping mall. It's about receiving cards and emails from folks you haven't thought about in quite some time. It's about singing carols, even yes, on Zoom. It's about watching children recreate the Christmas story. Christmas is about the wonder of God's love for us in the small, insignificant package of a newborn and the outrageous, over-the-top announcement from shepherds who were so inspired that they had to go and see. It's about magi following a star, a star that leads them from the east towards the perfect light, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. That's what Christmas is all about. All of the characters in the Christmas story were jolted out of jaded, overly cynical mindsets and responded with wonder to the heavenly message. The shepherds regained their ability to wonder and they shared that wonder with those they met and wonder spread. The Magi reclaimed their ability to wonder, and they followed the star till it came to rest on the house in which the young child was. And when they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they fell down and worshipped him. Then, being warned by God in a dream, they departed into their own country by another way. Wonder spread again. As Linus returns from center stage and says, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown picks up the pitiful, drooping tree with a smile on his face and heads home, noticing the stars and the lights as if for the first time. He has regained his wonder. He finally feels the way he is supposed to feel. And as the program ends, the children stand around the little tree that has been transformed, which by the way, is a symbol of each of our transformations when we too have been able to accept the wonder of God's message. God entrusted the greatest message ever sent from heaven to a bunch of smelly shepherds and pagan magi. God has always worked wonders for the forgotten, for the despised and for the lowly. And God is reaching out to us, reaching out with the tiny fist of a newborn, singing to us once again, behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God is entrusting this story to us. May we be as wonderstruck as were those rough shepherds, as single-minded as were those foreign magi of so very long ago. May we recognize that our encounter with God 
is more than the signs of the season, the lights, the gifts, the parties, the decorations, that it is, in fact, the awe and joy of coming face to face with the mystery of God's unshakable love. Let us follow that star of wonder. May we too be guided to that perfect light. Amen. The seventh lesson, John 1, 1 through 14. John unfolds a great mystery of the incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. O oh God, who makes us glad with the yearly remembrance of your birth of your only son, Jesus Christ, send into the darkness of this troubled world the light of your son. 
Let the star of your hope touch the minds of all people with the bright beams of mercy and truth, and so direct our steps that we may ever walk in the way revealed to us, as the shepherds of Bethlehem walked with joy to the manger where he dwelled, who now and ever reigns in our hearts, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to take your candle and to light it as I am lighting this light from the Christ candle. 